A common piece of the hero's journey is living up to the legacy of those in which your powers came from. The idea that the hero must prove themselves worthy of their newfound power is not necessarily new, but that's not to say there aren't still interesting ways to tell that story. Case in point, Lego Monkey Kid. Lego Monkey Kid follows MK as he inherits the powers of Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, and must handle the responsibility of being his successor. But what makes this hero's journey interesting is the dynamic and relationship between the Monkey King and the Monkey Kid, and how MK is forced to carve out his own legacy. And I think Monkey Kid really explores the idea of legacy and how nuanced it can actually be, and whether or not that legacy is actually up to you or not, and the choice that's involved within that legacy. And I feel like MK as a character perfectly embodies all these different questions that the show presents to us. So in today's video, we dissect MK's journey to become a hero, and how how his mentors have shaped him over the course of the story. So without further ado, let's dive into LEGO Monkey Kid. So I think it's important that we start off with a basic understanding of who MK is as a character at the beginning of the show. MK is initially introduced to us as your standard, overconfident, hyperactive, but well-meaning protagonist. Yes, he has flaws with his overconfidence, especially getting him into trouble, but it's important to give your protagonist these flaws so that they have room to grow, especially when these opportunities for growth directly correlate with your protagonist's main goal, which in MK's case is being the Monkey King's successor, at least at the start of the show. We end up learning the more nuanced goals of MK in the future, but as of now, it does seem pretty surface level. It's also important to note that giving MK character flaws also works as a vehicle for conflict and often drives a lot of the morals within these episodes. Since Monkey Kid is a more episodic show, more so in season 1 and 2, most episodes see MK learning some type of lesson or moral. However, they all feel natural because they all stem from MK's previously established character flaws. He also starts to show signs of Sun Wukong's character as more is revealed. MK's ego, strength, and even morality are all tested, and all these issues stem from Sun Wukong. With other traits such as MK's hyperactivity and inability to often focus are pre-established before he even meets the guy. And to say that his hyperactivity would be necessarily a flaw would be missing the point. Because while it can get him into trouble, it's not necessarily a trait that needs to be erased or removed. It's part of his personality, and I believe it's what makes MK such an entertaining character in the first place, while also matching the high-paced, action-filled style of the show, while also really aiding the comedy as well. But it's important to note that MK's inability to focus, listen to others, or even his impatience with Sun Wukong's teachings stem from this trait, and the show perfectly uses these drawbacks and weaknesses to push him to grow as a character. This way, MK can constantly be tested and growing. And the this plays off Sun Wukong really well because not only does Wukong have to act as a teacher, but his teachings are also rooted within his own messy past where he clearly made some mistakes. These flaws of course start to rub off on MK through his teachings, which is initially called out by Macaque, but is emphasized much more in Season 4 with Azure Lion, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Now that we have established who MK is, how does he play a role in shaping his narrative? The first season of the show follows a consistent and pretty basic premise. MK works as a noodle delivery boy in return for letting him have a place to live. And of course, let's not forget that there are a few other reoccurring characters as well, such as Pigsy's number one customer, Tang, MK's friend, May, and Pigsy's old friend and once warrior, Sandy. On top of having a job delivering noodles, MK is also regularly training with Sun Wukong. And while there are episodes where other characters get some focus, most episodes follow MK as he delivers noodles and trains with Wukong. And Wukong's training is where most of the development for MK comes from, though many of his traits are also tested by Pigsy as well. The show uses its characters and premise to gradually teach MK lessons over the course of the first season as he's learning his powers. For example, in the episode Duplication Nation, I have no idea if that's how you say that, MK learns how to summon clones of himself. At the start of the episode, he's frustrated by the fact that he has so many responsibilities that he can't handle all at once, so he irresponsibly uses his clone power to solve his problem. The clones, of course, begin to cause a ton of issues, and he's forced to deal with the consequences, and by the end, he learns a lesson about responsibility. And from this point on, we don't see MK using his powers very irresponsibly in the future, showing that he's learned from what happened in the episode, even with that small gag at the end insinuating otherwise. And as a single episode, it's a small development, but MK goes through these small developments over the course of the entire season. 
That way his growth is slow yet natural and perfectly fits into the episodic structure of the show with the lesson of the week type format. Not only is the show teaching good lessons to kids, but it's constantly adding towards MK's development. But not all of MK's development is positive development, and that's where things start to get interesting. Part of what's so interesting about MK's development is his relationship to Sun Wukong. From the very first episode, we know Wukong isn't really cut out to be a teacher. He's lazy, irresponsible, overconfident, and has a bit of an ego. But due to that, these traits start to rub off on MK. But at the end of the day, Wukong cares about MK and wants to see him succeed. And this dynamic is essential for MK's development, as he looks up to Wukong, almost as some sort of father figure to him. Hmm. Hey, May, you know Monkey King's not actually my dad, right? But it's MK's admiration for the Monkey King that causes him to replicate some of these traits, even if it's to a lesser degree. It's also his often reliance on Wukong that gets him into trouble when he's not around. But it's not like MK agrees with the Monkey King about everything all the time. A lot of Wukong's teachings rely on patience and practice, which isn't always easy for MK. And while he eventually learns about the importance of focus, he is often unable to see the bigger picture within Wukong's teachings, and there's still a lot more to Sun Wukong in general than meets the eye. And this is where Makak comes in. Makak is the antithesis to Wukong, but it's not really as simple as good guy Monkey King versus bad guy Monkey King. It's more nuanced than that, which is what makes Makak's dynamic with MK so interesting. Season 2 and onward really dive into the deeper connections between MK and Makak, but the seeds are all planted here in Season 1. Makak isn't really necessarily evil Wukong, but he has a different mindset towards a lot of different things, and you could even argue that Makak has done less bad for the world than Wukong has. Well, they have their share of messy pasts, but they both see the greatness within MK and want him to succeed. It's just that in Makak's case, he doesn't want to see a repeat of what happened with Wukong, opting to teach MK how to harness his powers in his way. None of that patience or focus. No, just beating the enemy with sheer strength alone. He sees MK as a weapon that he doesn't want to see fall into the wrong hands, which is why I believe he tries to take his powers in the first place to protect MK from what he could become. Like I said, he doesn't want to see a repeat of Wukong. This plan doesn't work, of course, but after this, MK learned a lesson on who he should trust. Unfortunately for him, though, he may be trusting the wrong person. By the end of Season 1, MK has learned quite a few lessons, but it mostly acts as setups for his traits and flaws slash struggles that we'll see expanded upon in the future. We see who he is, what he does, and where he fails, but also where he succeeds. But starting in Season 2, we see his perception on being the Monkey King's great successor begin to change. Season 2 is a big season in terms of growth for MK. Not only does he learn and master a ton of useful powers, but he is also forced to be less reliant of Sun Wukong. During Season 1, most of MK's problems were solved by him getting some motivation from Wukong or relying on his help, but now with him gone, he has to do everything on his own. And um, the show is aware of this too, mentioning this while MK is stuck in the furnace. And growing independent is an important part of the season as Wukong is gone throughout the entire thing up until the very end. Sure, through astral projection they're still able to communicate from time to time, but for the most part, MK is left to do things all on his own. And of course, MK's previously established character flaws give him even more room to grow with episodes where he learns lessons such as the importance of listening, taking advice, and of course not following in the footsteps of your possibly morally corrupt mentor. But we'll get to that last one later. Because first, we have to talk about episode 5, otherwise known as the episode with one of the coolest scenes I have ever seen in any animated piece of media. This scene with the Lady Bone Demon is not only just a super cool scene, but it also begins to fully showcase MK's doubts about being the Monkey King's successor. After everything he's been through and after being left to do things on his own, his self-confidence is starting to take a hit. And with the Lady Bone Demon bringing his doubts to the surface, it is here that he truly starts to question if he is worthy or even strong enough to save the world without Wukong by his side. I feel as if this further insinuates the idea of MK being nothing but a weapon for Wukong to use, with the Lady Bone Demon referring to MK as just a piece in the game, perhaps a pawn for those who are able to take control of him or his powers. It makes you begin to question MK's role within this whole story, much like he starts to. And it's this mystery as to why he was even chosen as the successor to Sun Wukong that builds investment, along with the fact that we have seen him grow and learn over the course of a season and a half. And season two just opens these revelations for us to dwell on, 
leaving us with questions for us to ponder. And of course, the Lady Bone Demon isn't the only character to bring these doubts of MKs to light. As we see Makak add some extra context, revealing his past with Wukong and how it could possibly affect MK in the future. Like I said before, Makak is concerned with the idea of MK going down the same path as Wukong, and with his appearance in Season 2, we get to know a little bit more about why. Makak tells the tale about the warrior and the hero. In other words, the tale of himself and Wukong. This story reveals a lot about Makak and why he worries about MK becoming like Wukong. In the story, Wukong achieved powers beyond comprehension, leaving Makak in the dust as a literal and metaphorical shadow. But what's fascinating about this story is how it applies to MK. Because while at face value it seems like MK is the warrior in the story, but the realization that MK is actually closer to being the hero, the one who got everything, endless power, and ended up abandoning the people closest to him, is vital for MK's story moving forward. <laughs> you saw a story about a hero who got handed everything, who didn't have to work for anything, and you thought you were the other guy? He already had doubts about his own role as the Monkey King's successor, but now he must contemplate the idea of being so much like him to the point where he hurts those closest to him. And it's just like what the Lady Bone Demon would go on to say in the Season 3 finale. No matter what he does, everything will just lead to, to pain. pain. He may be too much like Sun Wukong for his own good. Season 2 was not only a season of growth, but a season of realization and doubt. Well, Season 1 set up MK's character, Season 2 plants the seeds for the future of the character and foreshadows the path that he would end up going down. Uh, you're right. That is enough. You know, you really are just that bit too much like him. <laughs> So, Season 3 spends a lot of time on its story due to the fact that the show becomes way more serialized within the season, and in some ways I'd argue that this season is a bit of a step back for MK as he loses his staff therefore having to relearn all his powers. Not to say that he has completely regressed, however as his doubts about his identity as the Monkey King are still very much there, they're definitely more in the background this season, as it's more focused on its story and the fact that it gives its side characters a lot more room to shine. His development about being more independent is also kept here, as MK isn't really relying on Wukong to solve his problems anymore, at least not as much. And in fact, he spends a long time actually separated from Wukong in the season, and he doesn't seem to have too much trouble, so he's definitely still become more independent overall. Makak is also a larger part of the season, but he doesn't really challenge MK in the same way he did in Season 1 and 2. Not to say Season 3 is bad, far from it. It's just not as focused on MK as a protagonist. I think that the main takeaway from the season is that, even without the staff, MK is still the Monkey Kid, and can still harness all of his powers. And while it's a great development for sure, I will admit it is a tad repetitive, and it's not incredibly relevant to his identity and morality struggles that he had been dealing with previously. What's really important, however, is that Wukong's dishonest nature is seen firsthand by MK and the main cast, as he hides information about the Samadhi fire from them, causing a whole ton of issues by episode 10 as Wukong ends up hurting the people closest to him, something that MK would have to worry about moving into season 4. And with the Lady Bone Demon defeated, her last words are ones that MK would not soon forget. By season 4, MK is pretty stressed by the amount of world-ending events that he had been at the center of, feeling responsible for the attacks that happened in the first place. Of course, Wukong is no stranger to this, but for MK it's starting to create a pattern that he can't simply ignore. And once he unleashes the Ancient Scroll, it's the final straw. And this is the season where all of the hints about MK's insecurities, past, and potential destiny start to come together. And that culmination is simply wonderful. So in a quest to rescue Wukong and his friends from the magic scroll, he ends up learning a lot more about himself than he probably desired. MK does really want things to go back to the way that they were, but it's evident by this point that that's impossible. And what's even more evident is how little MK actually knows about his past and where he actually came from. 
Introducing this guy, an ink personification of all of MK's fears and doubts, all rolled up into one sinister character. And this Shadow MK scene is probably my favorite in the entire show. And like I said, this is truly the culmination of all the struggles MK had been through. But the scene doesn't simply reinforce those struggles. No, no, no. It builds upon them. MK questioned why he was chosen as the successor to the Monkey King and if he was really the right choice, but now the question is, why does he even exist? For what reason is he the center of all of the world-ending events and conflicts that he has to go through? Why can't he just be a normal noodle delivery boy? And most importantly, is his existence a blessing or a curse on this world? All undeniably very difficult questions to grapple with, and this ink personification of himself represents the pure stress and anxiety that MK goes through. Up until this point, MK had been denying all of these thoughts within his head, pushing them back. But now, they are at the forefront directly confronting him. All of his doubts, worries, fears, anxieties, questions, he is directly confronted with them and his own identity. And this confrontation is what pushes MK over the edge into becoming just like him. Just like Sun Wukong. Ever since he met Makak, this fear has been planted, but now it's real. And of course, MK feels completely at fault for everything. And just like the Lady Bone Demon said, everything he has done has led to pain. Pain to both him and the people closest to him, causing him to leave his friends just like Wukong did in Season 3. May was right. I need to stop dragging you into my fights. All of you. I'm sorry, bud. I need you to sit this one out. The most messed up thing is, I, I never even realized, never even questioned who I am, or where I come from, or why, or... Until I know what I am, what my destiny is, I can't risk hurting the people I care about, the ones I have left. MK, just wait, we can... I just... I need to clear my head. And his impact on the world, whether good or bad, is way larger than he ever could have imagined. And it's this dilemma that I find so incredibly interesting. We have a protagonist who is forced upon this role. MK isn't a hero because he went out of his way to be one. Sure, he has a good heart and he wants to help people, but this isn't necessarily what he wants. And here's what makes this so fascinating. Protagonists are often defined by two things, their wants and their beliefs. A character's beliefs often influence their wants. And the thing with shows like this is that most protagonists want to save the world because they believe in helping people or that they have a responsibility bestowed upon them, but here MK doesn't necessarily want to save the world. He does it because he has to. Now, that doesn't mean he hates doing it. If so, he probably wouldn't even bother. And that's because his beliefs push him despite his wants. He believes, just like many protagonists in his situation, that he is responsible for the well-being of his friends and those around him. He doesn't want to save the world. He wants to have fun Monster of the Week adventures and deliver noodles, but he can't carry out that want unless his friends are safe. And that's what pushes him to keep going. Despite everything, MK is our hero. He is the perfect main character because despite his flaws, despite the obstacles he faces, and despite what he has been through, he will do anything to keep his friends safe because all MK wants is to have good fun times with his pals and the last thing he wants is to cause any more pain. At the point of writing this video, we have yet to see Season 4 fully conclude, but I surely believe MK's journey is far from over. When I started the show, it did seem like MK was going to be your run-of-the-mill kid show protagonist, but he's so much deeper than that. And the show knows that because they use the tropes of a character like MK to subvert your expectations. But MK is a truly incredible main character, and for what I believe to be a truly incredible show. And I can't wait to see where his journey takes him. This is your fate. Your friends will turn on you, seeing you for the monster you will become. They will destroy you, Harbinger of Chaos. It's just like the Lady Bone Demon said. Despite your efforts, all you'll ever do is cause pain and suffering. Stop talking! Get out of my head! Wrong. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. I'm so glad that I finally caught up with Lego Monkey Kid because it truly is a fantastic show and I think that MK is such a good protagonist for this story. 
and I'm just loving it a lot, so I thought, you know, it's a Lego, so I might as well cover it on this channel. Which officially opens the floodgates to any other Lego media to be covered on this channel. So if you guys have any other shows or movies or Lego stuff that you guys want to see me review, again, whether it be books, movies, shows, whatever, let me know in the comments. And also, you can show support to this video if you guys want to see more Monkey Kid coverage as well. Because I really love the show, and there's so much more I could talk about with it as well. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and goodbye.